Today, we're going to read a news article together, and you're going to learn a lot of vocabulary, grammar, and even pronunciation naturally by reading this article with me. Now, this is an article from the BBC. I'm sure you're very familiar with the BBC and already use it to improve your English, so let's keep doing that together. Welcome back to J4's English Training. Of course, I'm Jennifer, and this is your place to become a fluent, confident English speaker. Now, let's get started. Welcome to our article. The title is Anna May Wong, who is this woman. Does she look familiar to you? Doesn't look familiar to me. Anna Mae Wong, actress, becomes first Asian American on US currency. Now, currency. This is another word for money. So currency is just describing the money. In the US, currency is in dollars or coins, in paper bills or coins. So currency is another word for money. Actress Anna Mae Wong is set to become the first Asian American to be featured on US currency basically what the title said. Now here, this is a great expression, to be set to become. So what do you notice here? What is this? To become. This is an infinitive, an infinitive. And what kind of verb is this? Well, of course, the verb to be, right? Now, this is important because it helps you understand the sentence structure for expressions because this expression is formed with the verb be and then set, be set, and then we have our infinitive. Now, in this case, the infinitive is to become, but we could change the infinitive verb to something else. And then notice, we have our verb conjugated with our subject. Who's the subject? Anna Mae Wong, of course. So our subject is she, and that's why it is is. She is set to become. Now, what does this mean? Be set to and infinitive. So this simply means be ready to or be prepared to. So you can use it in the same way. You might say, for example, I'm set to present at tomorrow's meeting. So my verb to be is conjugated with the subject I, we have our verb set, which doesn't change, and then we have our infinitive, in this case my verb is present, and the infinitive doesn't change also. So the only thing you're conjugating is the verb to be. I'm set to present at tomorrow's meeting. Now native speakers will frequently add the word all for no reason at all. It doesn't add anything to the meaning of it. I'm all set. I'm all set to go to the mall. I'm ready to go to the mall. You don't have to do that. It's just optional. So you could say, I'm set. I'm set to go to the airport, for example. I'm ready to go. I'm prepared to go. She will appear as part of an effort to feature notable women on American quarters. Wong, who is considered the first Chinese American film star in Hollywood, is the fifth and final woman to be individually featured on the coin this year. Okay, on the coin. What coin are we talking about? Hmm, a little listening comprehension quiz for you. On the coin, the coin, which coin? Well, the coin is here. The quarter, the quarter. This could be tricky for you if you're not familiar with American currency, which again means money. So quarter is a type of coin, which is why we have it here. And the value is 25 cents 
or 0 0.25, 0 0.25 of a dollar. That's the value of a quarter. So it doesn't get you very much. Now, I want to talk about pronunciation because I hear a lot of mistakes with the pronunciation of women, women. This is, well, I'll ask you, is this singular or plural? Singular or plural? Women, women, notable women. This is plural. So one woman, two women. I want you to notice my pronunciation. One woman, wo, uh, woman, woman. Two we, eh, eh, women. Two women. One woman, two women. Good pronunciation tip for you to practice. All right, now. Keep in mind this quarter because I know there's a picture of the quarter below, so you'll get to see this. And remember, a quarter is a coin and it's currency and it's worth 25 cents or 0.25 of a dollar. The quarter will enter general circulation on Monday. To enter general circulation, this is a very formal way of saying will be used by people. So you will get it when you go to a store, when you go to the bank, you will receive it. I don't think you really need to know that for your vocabulary. It's quite formal, but for listening comprehension, for reading comprehension, now you know what it means. It, what does the it represent? It, the quarter, the quarter, that's the it. It, the quarter, will feature President George Washington on one side and Wong on the other. So we have this coin. There's two sides of the coin. One side is the president, the other side, Wong. Ventress Gibson, director of the U.S. Mint, called Wong a courageous advocate who championed for increased representation and more multidimensional roles for Asian American actors. Now here, this is a good word to have in your vocabulary. It's quite formal, but we use this often in a business context and you will see it a lot when you're reading anything from the news. So you hear, in this case, they're using it as a noun. She was an advocate. Notice I have a courageous advocate because right now advocate is separated by my adjective courageous. So because of that, this is our adjective, because of that, I need my article a because a goes with courageous. But if I just have advocate and no adjective in front of it, then I need an, an advocate. Because we use an when you have a vowel sound, a vowel sound before, an advocate. So you can say, she was an advocate. This is the noun. We very commonly use this as a verb form. She advocated for Asian American actors. She advocated for. When you advocate for, notice our preposition choice here. You don't advocate to, advocate on, advocate in. You advocate for. When you're learning vocabulary, it's very helpful to learn the prepositions when you learn the words because if you don't use the correct preposition, it will be grammatically incorrect and it won't sound very good either. She advocated for... Um, Asian American actors. So you can advocate for someone. This would be a someone, a group of people. You can also advocate for something. So you might say she advocated for increased representation. 
So this is a some thing. Our preposition doesn't change. We still need for in both cases, something, something increased representation or someone Asian American actors. And when you advocate for someone or something, you act as a representative for them, a supporter for them. You want to promote their views and you want to promote their cause, whatever that cause may be. So you're supporting them. It's just a more formal way of saying it, but very common in a newspaper context. You'll hear it a lot in the media and it is a good business verb to have as well. This quarter, oh, we're going to see the quarter. Are you excited? Dun, dun, dun. Here's the quarter. So remember, this is worth 25 cents or one quarter of a dollar, 0.25 of a dollar, one quarter. That's why it's called quarter. So this is a coin. Remember, coin, a coin. The name of the coin is a quarter. There are different coins in American currency. And remember, currency is money. So this is a type of currency and the type of coin it is, is a quarter. This is a very nice quarter, isn't it? So if you're in the U.S. right now, you can go to a store, go to a bank, and you might receive this coin. You might receive this quarter. That would be pretty cool. And remember, on the other side, we have President, who was it? George Washington, I believe. This quarter is designed to reflect the breadth and depth of accomplishments by Anna Mae Wong, who overcame challenges and obstacles she faced during her lifetime, she said. Let's look at breadth and depth. Now, breadth is the range. So if someone has a breadth of knowledge, it means their knowledge is wide on many different subjects. And depth you can think of as this way. So you have all these different subjects. Let's say one subject is politics. And then you have your depth of politics. So you know many different subjects. That's your breadth of knowledge. And then within each subject, you know a lot about that subject. And that's your depth. So that's a great expression we have. We usually use breadth and depth in terms of knowledge. Here you can see they're doing it with accomplishments. So she could have a breadth of accomplishments, maybe accomplishments as an actress, accomplishments as a teacher, accomplishments as an advocate. And then within each accomplishment, she has a depth of accomplishment. So she has many different times that she advocated or many different times that she was a successful actress. Let's, oh, here's our lovely quarter again. I'd really like to see one in person now. Let's move on. Wong was born in Los Angeles in 1905. 1905. Notice how I'm pronouncing this as O. The number is zero. Zero, one, two, three. I have zero dollars in my bank account. Hopefully you don't need to say that. I have zero dollars in my bank account. <laughs> Hopefully not you. Now, of course, that is this zero, zero, one, two, three. But I wouldn't say 1905. I would for dates. Let me continue here with our date. So with date... You pronounce it as O. That's the pronunciation. 1905. 1905. That's the pronunciation here. But if I'm telling someone my phone number, I might say, 
I could say 0019 if this was part of my phone number or 0019. So you could do either with a phone number, zero or O. Both of them are quite common to be honest. So with phone numbers, addresses even, I live at 0019 or 0019 addresses, um, money, you would say zero. So for money, you would definitely say z zero. But for dates, we would say, oh, 1905. Wang was born in Los Angeles in 1905 to Chinese immigrants. Her name at birth was Wang Liu Sung. I'm not sure how to pronounce that. But later in life, she adopted the stage name of Anna Mae Wong. And I'm sure this is exactly why she changed her name, because Americans don't know how to pronounce that, unfortunately formed by joining her English and family names. She was cast in her first role at 14 as an extra in the film The Red Lantern and continued to take on smaller parts until her lead role in The Toll of the Sea in 1922. You probably don't know these movies. Maybe you do. I don't know these movies. Let's look at this here. What did I want to show you? Okay, first of all, when you're cast in a movie role, this is a verb specific for the entertainment industry. So you can be cast in a TV show, a play, a movie, anything that you perform in. And that is used for the entertainment industry. It means that she was hired for the job, but they don't use this vocabulary in the entertainment industry. This is why when you're learning a language is so important to understand the specific industry you're in and then learn the terms and the vocabulary of that industry. If you're in the medical industry, or if you're a lawyer or an engineer, you're going to have very specific vocabulary to your industry and you need to learn that vocabulary. So if you're in the entertainment industry, you should probably already know this verb to be cast in a role. So anyone else would just say she was hired for the job. This is in a a regular context, not the entertainment industry. Okay, here we have a great phrasal verb to take on, to take on. When you take something on, you accept responsibility for a project or a task. In this case, she accepted responsibility for a part, which is a part of a movie. So she was in the movie for a portion of time. Your boss, for example, might say, can you take on this client? Which means, can you accept responsibility for this client, for this job. Or I took on too many projects last month. So last month you said, yes, I can do that. Yes, I can do that. Yes, I can do that. You accepted responsibility for different tasks or different assignments, but it was too much. Or you might say, sorry, I can't take that on right now. I already have a lot on my plate. I'm teaching you a bonus expression right here. 
The expression is to have a lot on and then one's plate. The one in this case is me. So I'm changing it to my, but I might say you have a lot on your plate. She has a lot on her plate. He has a lot on his plate. They have a lot on their plate. Now that means to be very busy. To have a lot on one's plate is an idiom and it means to be very busy. So that could be the reason why you can't take that on, that being whatever project it is. I can't take on that project. I can't take that on. I have a lot on my plate. So that's a great idiom for you to start using. She appeared in more than 60 movies across her career. That's a lot of movies. That's impressive. Including silent films and one of her first one of the first made in Technicolor. Interesting. Wong was also the first Asian American lead actor in a U.S. television show, The Gallery of Madame Louis Song, in which she played a Chinese detective. After facing discrimination in the U.S., she traveled to Europe to work in English, French, and German films. I like this expression here. After, and then you have a gerund. This is a great sentence structure for you to use to sound quite advanced. So you can say, after graduating, I moved abroad. After improving my English, I took on more public speaking. So you accepted responsibility for, I took on more public speaking after improving. Now you could absolutely say after I improved and then everything else would be the same. But notice in this case, we're using a gerund verb. And in this case, I'm using subject and then my verb is going to be conjugated in the past simple because the action is complete. After I graduated, I moved abroad. After graduating, I moved abroad. To me, this sounds very natural. It has a nice flow to it and it sounds more advanced than saying after I graduated. So I highly recommend you add this to your vocabulary. Remember, it is after plus gerund. After plus gerund, which is your verb in ing. How much do we have? Okay, we're almost done here. She was awarded a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame in 1960 and died the following year, aged 56. Gemma Chan, known for appearing in Crazy Rich Asians and Marvel's Eternals, is set to portray Wong in an upcoming biopic about the star's life. Oh, so we're going to have a movie coming out about Wong in the near future. Now, here's our expression again, is set to. What does this mean? Is prepared to or ready to. And remember, it's to be set and then infinitive. So here our infinitive is to portray and our verb to be is conjugated with he, she, it, because what's the subject in this case? Our subject is Gemma Chan. Our subject is quite far removed from our verb, which happens a lot in spoken English, of course, but it happens equally in written English. All of this in the commas is just extra additional information, but our subject is Gemma Chan and our verb is conjugated with 
the subject. She's ready to portray Wong. The American Women, the American Women Quarters Program. So this is one name of something. The American Women Quarters Program. Remember our pronunciation of women, wh, wh, women, women. The American Women Quarters Program began this year and will feature five women each year until 2025. Native Hawaiian hula teacher Edith Kana, Kanaka Ole Kanaka Ole has been named as one of the selections for 2023. So they're talking about a different quarter. So remember our quarter. Quarter. So in 2023 is going to be the Hawaiian hula teacher who's going to be on the quarter. So you can look out for that as well. Has been named as one of the selections for 2023. So that's the end of the article. There was one other thing I wanted to explain before we wrap up, which means to end before we wrap up, before we end the following year, aged 56. I see a lot of mistakes with age. So you can say she was 56 when she died. So this is correct. You can also say she was 56 years old when she died. That is correct. How about this one? She was 56 years when she died. What do you think? She was 56 years when she died. Is this correct or incorrect? What do you think? This is incorrect. You can't say that. I see this a lot. So you have two options when saying age. You can say just the number. 56. She was 56. Or you can include years old. 56 years old. Those are your two options. This is not correct. You cannot just say years. You either have to get rid of it or you have to add old. But this by itself is not correct. So make sure you don't say that one. And that is the end of the article. So I hope you enjoyed learning about our actress who is on the quarter, Anna Mae Wong. And remember, you can watch that upcoming movie about her that's going to be played by Gemma Chan. So that will be quite interesting. So I hope you enjoyed the article. Amazing job with this lesson. Now, I want you to take one of your new expressions that you learned from this article and leave some example sentences in the comments below so you can practice your new vocabulary. And if you found this video helpful, please hit the like button, share it with your friends, and of course, subscribe. And before you go, make sure you head on over to my website, jforestenglish.com and download your free speaking guide. In this guide, I share six tips on how to speak English fluently and confidently. And until next time, happy studying.